join our Bible study series that is called the Return to God? No, I haven't gone yet. Yes or no? Yes. 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 I hope so. It's like watching Korean drama. It's a drama of Israelites, right? They are up and down, up and down. We know they're going to get into trouble, right? And uh, this week's study is uh, uh, covered by whole chapter. As a matter of fact, it's going to be supported by Judges chapter 5, too. See, chapter 4, Judges chapter 4 is uh, telling the history of what happened. And chapter 5 is retelling in a poetic form, what happened. And we call it what? Uh, Song of Deborah, right? Remember Song of Mary in the New Testament? And this is Song of Deborah in the Old Testament. And it just proclaim God's power, God's majesty, God's love and grace all over. And what? how God is good to us all the time. Amen? Amen. And so as we look at this passage, to make a long story short, and Israelites did evil in the eyes of Yahweh again, right? Therefore, they were attacked by the enemies, and especially this Canaanite Javins army too, that Sisera was uh, leading. And they plundered their nation, the Israelites, for how many years? Twenty years. Now they say, finally they say, we had it enough. The, the, the suffering we cannot bear anymore. Oh God, help us. And so, God, in His grace and His mercy, forgave them without saying anything, right? Forgave them and raised who? Prophetess Deborah, this time a woman political leader, a judge, and she led men and his troop, 10,000 troop, to combat Caesar, and they won the battle, and they had what, how many years of peace at their land? We just read, 40 years, amen? Now, so as you can see, always God's people live in God, not God. God never deserted them. He was always there. But His people betrayed God. They worshiped other gods. They worshiped um, idols. They worshiped the God of uh, iPhones and God of Facebook and etc. like a current generation do. You know, it's uh, so true. God is like a building. He is here. We are in and out of uh, His grace. We are in and out of His protection. When sun shines, we thank God that all our power has to do something with it, right? And when life is going well, we kind of take for granted, and we kind of slice back and do other things. And then, when we do that, God's protection not going to be follow us. Then we get into trouble. Then we are like Israelites, come back to God. Oh God, I can't take this anymore. Please, please help me. Then God says, okay, now you realize now you realize that you need to be under my protection, you need to be under my blessing, you need to be under my prosperity. All right, you realize that you came back, you returned to me, I will give you way out, I will deliver you from your dungeon. Amen? That's, what, that's why we say our God is good all the time, all the time. He is good. Now, you know, uh, this week's uh, study material, the title is what? Somebody shout it. Hmm? Who? Who can I trust? Huh? It's no brainer. <laughs> I laughed at it. Can you trust yourself? 
all the time? Can you trust your spouse all the time? Somebody say yes. Can, can, you, can you trust your lawyer all the time? Can you trust your doctor all the time? Can you trust your best friend all the time? Somebody say yes. I mean, if you do, you are in big trouble. You are in an eye opening because we are human beings. No can be trusted all, all the time, right? We have feelings, well, our feelings betray us, right? No? Yes. Right? Yes. yes, right? So this is no brainer. We trust our God. Only a God like you, He deserves our own devotion, emotion, etc. Our service. Only a God like Him. And we know when we trust Him, we know God will never let us go. So therefore, and also when we encounter like a big, huge problem like a Sisera, Sisera <laughs> then we say, God is for us, who can be against us, right? And He's unfailing, because of His unfailing love, that's why He does what He does for us and to us. So, then what shall we do? I mean, where well, I'm going with this, right? We have all the answers already. When we say, I trust God, I trust you, only a God like you, I, took my devotion, my allegiance, my own emotions like you. What should be evident in our daily life, in our faith journey? That's what we're going to learn from this passage, this chapter 4. I mean, there are many things will be evident if uh, when you truly, bottom of your heart, say, I trust my God. But today, we're going to look into only three U's. You know, I hope you enjoy these letters. Sometimes I agonize over, my English is short. What can I have, you know, lined up so that people can remember, you know? But, so, I hope you enjoy it. If you don't, that's fine. It works for me. So, Three use. So if we say we trust God only Him, then we forgot to. That's, this is what God requires of us in our lives. That's how we can return to God. Three use. God, God requires of us having unconditional obedience. So unconditional obedience. Okay? Second, you is uncontainable faith. Overflowing faith. Faith in action. Uncontainable faith. And then last one is what? Unfailing love for him and others. Alright? So you got it? If you don't hold this tree, I may lose it. So keep in touch with me and just shoot out the messages toward me so I can repeat after you. Amen? Amen. This morning, nobody is really into sync with me. Too cold? No? All right. So what was the first one? Unconditional. Obedience. All right. <laughs> Look at this. From verses uh, 6, 7, and 8, 9, we get to know the whole story about Barak. You know, his name is what? Meaning is a uh, lightning. And he is uh, a general. Right? And uh, Deborah went to this uh, general of uh, army troops. Uh, that God said that you got to go come back to Sisera and God will hand him over to you, to your hands. And then Barak says what? Hmm? If you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, 
I won't go. Hello? You have 10,000 troops behind you. And you are a soldier, general. And God said he will give him to your hand. Why do you have to hesitate? Why do you have to do if, then? Conditional obedience. So, Deborah says what? Verse 8 or 9. Deborah says what? Well, that's fine with me because I trust my God. So, I will go with you because your conditional obedience you will not get the credit. You go fight, you labor, you pour your sweat and your heart pounding whatsoever, you ain't going to get the credit. That's what happens, you know. If we say we trust the Lord God, we should go full forth, unconditional obedience when God calls you to do something. Don't say, if my kids graduate, graduate, then I will serve you more, right? If you show me the money, I will give you money, or you promote me, right? Then I will. If then, if then, <coughs> then it's never going to, if you, we will never going to experience Experience God blessing our sacks off. Halfway off, probably. <laughs> Half obedience. You know, when God told me to drop everything, my life, my enjoyment, my earnings, <coughs> to go to seminary in old age, seminary to prepare to be a pastor, I say no way Jose, right? But and I said what? If you show me the money, um, I was influenced by my husband, so I can put it back. <laughs> anyway, if then, you know, because now you have to adjust to live by one income. We have the two incomes. I was making good money. And now we have to adjust one income. Our expenses never change. Right? And also, I was a woman, so seminary is not going to provide any scholarship. If you're a man, they know. Men drop their work and come, and then they, they are bread owners in the household, and then they give them a bunch of scholarship. You know? But because I was a woman, they ain't going to. So, guess what? $20,000 a year for four years. So, if we have a savings of $80,000 in the bank, we will go. I will go. I struggled with this for six months at least. And then when I finally decided to go, and my we were kind of grumbling to have to pay the money out of our savings to get more education. My husband said, you don't need more education, you don't need more education, you fine now, you know. And then First year went by so quickly, and the second year, you know, it's, oh, I, I don't remember much. Second year, it was uh, the, the seminary required that I should go uh, have a pastoral internship, not from, not uh, uh, in my home church. I would have to go different church to experience what it's like being a pastor. So, to make a long story short, I was uh, ended up in uh, the 99% of a white congregation and uh, about 5,000 members. And then, um, and then uh, the, that church had uh, eight different uh, pastors. And my home church pastor kind of asked the uh, pastor to just sign the paper so that I look like I finished my requirement. And then he can use me in his home church, right? That's why, I mean, the, the white church didn't, didn't have the money to pay for me. So that's what they did. So I received the uh, paper, 
the pastor signed it. So I said, since you signed this paper that I'm working under your supervision, let me work for you. And he goes, oh, we don't have money to pay you. That's fine. I will work for you. You see, it worked out that Korean church and the, my home church was worshiping 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, this uh, white church worshiped uh, 9 and 10 and it was 3 services. So from the morning I was there and then in the afternoon, I, all day, Sunday is my church day. And then during the week I go to seminary and etc. During that time, and like Ahab I know you call it here, but the Presbyterian meeting, the elders of representatives of each church, and also the pastors of each church sitting on the floor like you, and about 250, 250 people sitting there examining my faith journey. You know, what makes you think you are called by God? What makes you think you can do, you know, etc. During that time, I uh, was talking about my faith journey and uh, how I was called to be a pastor, and etc., etc. And now I'm uh, working as a pastoral intern at Fields Church. And, and so the, uh, the elder who was sitting on the floor, he never knew me. He was uh, the, that church member. He never knew me. And the pastor sitting next to him said, you know, you should be shamed upon your church. I mean, shame your church. They never paid anything. There was a COM who was sitting there. And this uh, elder was so touched by my testimony and so embarrassed that the church do not pay me nothing for my labor. And he went back and he talked to other, some people. And then, guess what? They adopted me uh, as a mission case and they sent me uh, tuition. Scholarship. So I said, oh, praise God, you know. And then when I went back to uh, seminary following year, try to pay um, my tuition, I found out that it's all paid off until my graduation. Hallelujah. And the, the amazing thing is I never get to know the guy's name that he did this by inspired by God. God raised him. It was anonymous. So I always give credit to the church. What if I said, God, you didn't show me the money, so I don't know. So I will do partially here, maybe 10 hours a week I work for you, and I'll do the full time. Job, I'll be dead meat by now. Right? And it will take me forever if that's God's will in your life. God's gonna carry it out in, until the completion, whether you believe in me or you give him a um you give him a conditional obedience, God will finish what he set to go and plan. So if we say we trust God, we better. What? Trust God. Trust God. Then what is uh, your proof that you trust totally trust in God is what? Unconditional obedience. Amen. That's uh, how you do it. Amen? Yeah, amen. We forgot to render. And then second, what was it? Uncontainable faith. Your faith is so strong, you cannot contain it for yourself. So everybody around you, they can see it's pouring out of you. Overflowing. Oh, yeah. Overflowing from you. Thank you. And that's what? Faith in action. Right? And let's look at about uh, verse 16 or so. And Deborah said to for a go, right? This is the day. Do you see that? <coughs> huh? 14. Huh? 14. 14. 14. All right. Sorry. Too many verses. You know, I get lost. Verse 14. He says, uh, she says, uh, go, this is the day that our God will give Sisera to your hands. 
And the, the craziest thing is, Barak went with his 10,000 troops. I mean, they were up here, right? They were on the mountain, and they saw the army with the 900 chariots, iron chariots, <coughs> and gathering in a combat field down there, all right? And it's no match. Like it's uh, like uh, you uh, self defense with uh, combating with the guns, you know, almost like. And yet, Barak didn't say to Deborah, "Well, what do you know about war? You are a woman. Have you been? What makes you think this is the time? I think uh, I'm gonna wait for some, you know, other situation. I'm gonna wait for some evidence that we could we, we could go and." Kill those guys. But when he took his troops boom, 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 down the hill, what happened? God opened the heaven, all out what? Thunder and storms and etc. etc. Right? Dun, 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 dun. It's watching your action movie. God's action there. God's interve intervention was there. Right? Now, did God open the sky before Borat moved, moved down the hill with his truth? No. That's a faith, uncontainable faith. He didn't have an uncontainable faith to, to God, but he had a what, uncontainable faith to Deborah, who had an uncontainable faith to God. You see? Uncontainable faith. And then, the chapter 5, verse, verse somewhere, it explains how they killed these guys. Because they were, Caesar army was what? Stuck in the mud. Chariots were stuck in the mud. They, they were unable to move. So, so they were in chaos. By that chaos, what? Israelites just slaughtered them all. Only one escaped. Who was that? Caesar. Yeah? And then only by, killed by what? A woman. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Who said a woman has no place in church? <laughs> right? There were in time. Child is uh, no one actually. You know, we never knew about her. We don't know her backgrounds. We only know she's a wife of uh, uh, the Ever and uh, Nome, and she lived in a tent nearby, and that's all we know. But her name is in Hebrew. That kind of suggests that it's her name meaning is mountain god and mountain god and. Uh, suggests that she might be a descendant of Israel, Israelites. And she might have faith in God because God raised her, used her to complete his plan for Israelites, right? That's all about we know. What a teamwork, right? Our God, when we face giant problems like the Sisera, our God wants not only individual uncontainable faith to combat that, if it is too much for each one of us to take, and God provided us what? With what? Faith community. Faith community that we can combat. You know, I always wonder, people who go through tragedies, if they are without, you know, faith journey, if they are without a believing body of the Christ, how can they combat, how can they overcome such a sadness, such a tragedy, or such a problem? No one actually can, you know? That's why it is important to belong to a faith community. It doesn't matter which community. It's uh, very important to, for you to join in a Bible study groups 
And that's where you absorb the strength of others in faith. So that, you know, hearing the word of God, right, increase what? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And then either you come every church, every Sunday you hear the word of God, you go to Bible study, you hear the word of God, you meditate upon yourself to hear the word of God. That's how you can grow and grow, 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 mature into uncontainable faith. That's how you can combat any problems, any big situations. And if we are all together in faith, we, Paul are no match. I mean, nobody is a match for us. I mean, we got to be mighty soldiers of Christ. No sister can overthrow us. Amen? Amen. And then, lastly, what was it? <laughs> Um, so when we say we trust God, we've got to have a express unfailing love for God and others. Now, I say Deborah had unfailing love for God. Then you, say, you ask me, how do you know? How do you know? How do I know? Because she obeyed. God's voice, God's command. You see, Jesus said, Psalm 15, 14, right? If you love me, you will obey my commandments. So she fully obeyed, unconditional obedience she provided, right? Then show the proofs that she has unfailing love for her God, right? And she was, she had uncontainable faith and we know she has had what? Unfailing love because when you love somebody, you love to please somebody, right? When you love, you Please try to do everything to please that person. And our God says what? Without faith, the, the word of God says what? Without faith, no one can please God. You see? So she had all this. Right? I'm failing her. Even Jaya. You know, we don't know much about her. But she must have an unfailing love for others. And she was delivering herself for justice here. She probably have heard how many years the Israelites uh, uh, suffered from the hands of uh, Caesar, and she heard about it. Now these guys crawling, coming, all escaping, all by oneself. She said, "Hello, come on in." She lured him into her tent and made him feel comfortable, right? Undoubtable because she was a very hospitable and she gave him a, a milk when he asked for milk. I mean, he asked for water, she gave him milk, right? She go extra and she covered him and she, you know, and then Caesar was thinking, okay, nobody gonna look for me in a woman's tent and she's very nice and I can relax here. And he fell asleep. And then this woman, who was filled with the law of justice, she couldn't stand any longer Israelite suffering. If she killed this guy, it's going to be over. So she picked up ten peg and put it on right there. Boom! One blow. You know, if we... If, Movie, movie maker is not here, is it here? If a movie maker, you know, they would uh, uh, make this lady be like a masculine and uh, hurt, hurt I mean, how can you kill the guy with one blow? I mean, you know, right? So never sleep on the side. You become vulnerable. <laughs> he must slept on the side so, he, you know, you could have...
Na, it's gruesome. And uh, you can see the similarities in uh, last week's lesson. Ehud stabbed Ammon and his belly in one, one, one blow that was done. Right? Right on the target. And this girl just, can you imagine? Go lay, I mean, go nearby this guy. I would shake. I can't even nail the. Um, <coughs> no, he don't nail without hitting my hand. You know. So this, what does it tell us? Why God took this gruesome image that we need to ponder? Eglon represented sin in our lives. And Sisera represents sin in our lives. Whenever we get sick, we need to go right at the cause, not the symptoms. Dealing with the symptoms never gonna be cured. You know, Dr. Oz was talking about the flu virus or, you know, and everybody got flu and get sick, cold virus, and everybody's running nose or sore throat or headache and belly ache and whatsoever, and we go buy the medication, okay, give me a timer for headache or stomach problem or runny nose, we buy the cough medication, no, runny nose, stop running. Nose medication, <laughs> coughing and stop coughing medication, right? But it lingers because we haven't dealt with the uh, virus that causes us to run, you know, to have to run, you know, no, runny nose and etc. You see, and Dr. I says you got to have what zinc to combat the virus. So if you was very vulnerable to your cold, you better take the zinc. And that's what our Bible says, our God says. If you are suffering from jealousy, overprotectiveness, or um, overcontrolling, you're suffering from that such an issue, you've got to look at it yourself. That's not because you do this that I am overly protected. Because you 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 you, you, you look, look at another guy and smile, so I get jealous. No, not because of so and so did what. It's because of what's in your heart that your insecurity plays role here. Or your low self-esteem. How do we get recovered from such an issue? Right in the center, right in the center in our heart, we need to be filled with God's unfailing love. You know, we think we generate the love, it's originated from Him. We love God because He first loved us. So if we don't get this love, we have emptiness in our heart. And that emptiness makes us vulnerable to any attack. Anybody, even kids, they feel unloved, they act out. You don't give them attention, they act out. See, they want to feel be loved so much. And we need to feel that. We need to feel that. How do we feel that? Dig into the Word of God and be in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in us, will reveal to us when we study the Word of God. Don't go chasing after in the air something, right? It's in the Word of God. How many times? That's why Jesus talked more than anything about 
love. When we have an unfailing love filled us, then we can soar like an eagle. Because His Spirit lives in us. We can deal with our sin, sinful nature, by the power of His love. Even though we fail, we know God's love can lead us to correct us so that we go with the full obedience, unconditional obedience, and uncontainable faith. We say we trust only God like you. We've got to be filled with His love by His Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. That's how we can win this battle. That's how we can return to God. As we look at this uh, study after study, this is an a Israelite pattern. This is our pattern too. So in order for us not to go down the hill and up and down, we want to stay up, 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 up until we see the Lord Jesus face to face. We've got to, we say we trust the Lord God, only God like you. And we say our God is greater than any other. We say our God's love is great. Then, We've got to practice what? Three, use unconditional obedience, uncontainable faith, and unfailing love in every day of our lives. As our New Year's resolution, New Year's resolution one of them is what? In order for us to be obedient, in order for us to have a faith, in order for us to love God, we've got to let God have His way in me every moment, every breath I take. Amen? Amen. That's how you return to God. That's when God's going to bless, bless our hearts off. Amen? Amen? Let us pray.